Hi. I've had a few comments from people asking, how did I make that paddle for Kate Louise? Well, today I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. Now you might say, why do I need a paddle at all? I've got an electric outboard. This is true, but in reverse, it's a bit hard to control and it's much easier with a paddle to get on and off a trailer or into a jetty. I could put oars on Kate Louise, but I think that would destroy the look of it. You can make a paddle out of any scrap timber. You've got to remember for a laminated paddle, you need good contrast between light and dark woods. That's the first thing. The second thing is length. Now the standard length for a canoe paddle is when you're sitting, it should be about head high. But because on Cape Louise I'll be kneeling on the thwarts or the seats and paddling over the side, I need to make it about 20 centimetres longer. So that's about 1.4, so I'm going to make it about 1.6. Okay, the next thing you need is a plan. Now, these are freely available on the internet to download and copy, and they're to scale, which means it's much easier to make a template. And I'll put the link below. I think they're from a Canadian designer. There's three different types of paddles here. They're mainly for canoes, but I've chosen beaver tail, which is this one along the bottom. To get from the plan to the paddle, obviously, you need to scale it up and make a template. And for that, I've used a bit of card or board. Each one of these gaps is one inch or 2.54 millimeters. It's important to have a hole at each end of the template on the center line, which is where your center lamination will be. So then you can easily flip it over and make sure it's symmetrical. And you'll use this template to cut the shape out of your laminated rough timber. So then which timber do you need to use? Well, I'm using an old uh, handrail, which is Oregon. It's probably got nail marks in it and dense but that doesn't matter too much. I'm using Oregon because it's lightweight and then I'm going to use Murbau which is an Australian hardwood for the thinner contrasting dark strips and then I've gone to Bunnings and I've just got some old pallet material they were throwing away which is rough sawn pine and use that as the lighter colour wood to contrast against the dark colour wood. And because I'm not paddling hundreds of kilometres with this paddle it doesn't have to be super light. So it's not quite the same as this one. This is just recycled building timber, so, you know, it's a bit rough and ready, but hey, it looks all right. Use a table saw to cut out the timber to widths wide enough to cover the template. And give all the pieces a quick sand so there's good contact when they're glued together. Now I can show you what it's going to look like. The pieces for the blade are 20 mil thick, but they'll sand down to about 15 mil later. The shaft pieces down the middle are 30 mil and they'll sand down to about 27 mil. Whew, it's definitely getting hot out here. Okay, now we can move into the shed for the fun part, the glue up. And for that you need a waterproof glue like Gorilla Glue, which comes from the States. It is expensive, but it's waterproof and very good. Normal PVA glue is probably not strong enough. And you will need as many clamps as you can lay your hands on. We'll probably leave it for 24 hours, maybe 48 hours for the glue really to go off. Uh, and then we start sanding and making it into a paddle. The first thing is to take the paddle template and mark it out on the paddle blank. Then flip it over so you can do the other side using the holes to line up with the center lamination. So that's a very rough shape. It doesn't really matter too much because you're going to sand it to perfection anyway. Okay, I've cut the blade out. Unfortunately, my jigsaw died, so I had to do it by hand, which was a bit fiddly. Of course, if you have a bandsaw, it's much quicker, but I haven't got one. Anyway, so this is the blank. I've now got to put a reference mark around the outside for thickness. So this is called a Bodger's Shave Horse. Uh, it's basically a medieval design where you can use your feet to clamp an object and free up both hands to use a, a draw knife or a spoke shave. I'm using a spoke shave here.
The spline or the shaft, which goes down the centre of the paddle, has to come to about a third of the way down the blade for strength. I use an angle grinder basically because it's quicker. Um, and I quite like carving or sculpting, I suppose you could call it. But remember, when using an angle grinder, it's very easy to take it off and it's impossible to put it back, so go very gently. I don't think this one's going to be quite as good as the last one because when I glued up the pieces, they weren't all exactly parallel. So I've got a bit of a curve or a scoop on one side, um, which I can't really grind out. So um, it's going to have more character than some of the others, put it that way. And it's also got a few more dings and marks in it, but that means you can tell it's recycled. So we're getting there. It's a slow, dusty process. Make sure you always wear a mask. And constantly check it against your template to make sure it's right and the line around the side to make sure your thickness is even. Now I've roughly shaped the handle and roughly shaped the blade, now I can address the shaft. And for that I use the spoke shave and just gently work it down from a square to a round. It does take a while to sand and shape, I'll be honest, but it is quite therapeutic. then the final circumference will be determined by feel. And then use a combination of a belt sander and a palm sander to remove any grinder marks and get it ready for varnishing. So it doesn't look too bad after sanding. Uh, there are a few imperfections in it, but hey, it's recycled timber, so what do you expect? It cost me nothing. Um, yeah, it'll look great after it's varnished. So I've put a small screw, just two or three threads into the top of the paddle. I'll fill up the hole later. For the first coat of varnish, I add about five to 10% of mineral turps just to dilute it a bit. So it's absorbed more into the timber. And then after that, I'll just use full strength. There'll be about four or five coats over the next couple of days. I think it looks all right. If you wanted it absolutely pristine, make sure you get very good timber, but it's quite hard to check the grain if it's painted on the outside before you slice it up. But yeah, I think it's all right. It'll do the job and it looks better than a plastic paddle. What can I say?